I never kind of realized until I went and I looked back through my old studio stuff, just find like, you know, all these oil paints and solvents and just, you know, chemicals. And I just was like, man, this is, this is crazy. Like, you know, people pouring this down their sinks. And I guess for me, I just, that was quite a big, like shock, like I used to do that. And I just can't even imagine doing that now. So these are a collection of leaves that I foraged this morning um, from the red zone. Um, so good old eucalyptus, which is awesome. Smells so good. Really lovely to make dye with that one as well. Um, Fajoas. Um, yeah, they're really great. Um, so your sycamores and yeah, your little maples as well. Um, so I use all secondhand fabric. Pop a few of the, few of the leaves on there. Um, so the whole eco printing process is quite an old process and yeah it's just essentially drawing out the tannins and acids and pigments from the leaf and, and transferring it onto the fabric so it's a kind of, of transfer um, print essentially. My name is Shona and I am an eco printer and textile artist in um, Otutai Christchurch. I've always been drawn to fabric and I love to draw, I love to paint. Since moving sort of close to the red zone, I would walk there every day with my dogs, twice a day. <laughs> and I just kind of got to know about the trees and the plants there and, you know, started off by foraging the cogs started turning and I just thought there's something else that I can do with this. There's another way in which this place can be utilized. I'd heard about eco printing before and I thought I'd give it, give it a try. I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the patterns that were made and the colors that came from it. And the fact that this was a natural process that could come from plants and flowers that, you know, was literally on my doorstep. So the red zone is a really expansive area um, just to the east of the city. It's basically a product of the 2011 earthquakes. That whole area was not suitable to rebuild on and the houses were knocked down and nothing was put in their place. Yeah, it turned into this magical green space. Everything's kind of coming back to life. There's heaps of birds there, loads of wildlife and kind of see like the lines of people's gardens and where driveways used to be and things like that. So you're still very aware that you're kind of walking on a place that's got lots of memories attached to it. I started off making bags and cushions and wall hangings and then I kind of developed on from there. I started to see shapes and patterns in there that I thought kind of could be joined together and moulded in a certain way. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but I really love the idea of the patterns that are made by something from the landscapes, um, then going in to create a landscape. It's that kind of nice full circle thing. <laughs> People going out and being more involved in nature then makes them care about it more and makes them want to be more sustainable. I hope that that meaning does come through in my, in my work. I, I definitely hope that other people are encouraged by that as well and go out and see the, the art is, that is within nature. I hope that people feel inspired by what nature can create and what you can do with it and and then in turn sort of use that as your voice to to you know get your message out there
Working in the forest, there's all these tensions, and I mean, that helps me to understand all of the tensions that are being faced in this area by farmers. Regenerative practice, it's a way of being. We have to find what this place wants to be, what's the potential of this place, and what's its unique gift to offer to the world.